Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to continue that series that I've been working on with the reels from the 60s and the 70s. Uh, I'm not quite sure what this one dates to, but we'll uh, go ahead and take it apart. It's another one of my $5 flea market finds. Uh, but we've been looking at the, uh, the reels that have been offshored in the lower end. I think we just completed um, uh, a uh, compact interceptor. We also uh, are looking at some other reels uh, from that era. Right now we're going to look at a South Bend Classic 2 with three, looks like a 350, could be a 360. Uh, the advertised as a ball bearing system reel, epoxy coated analyzed spool. It's a big reel that would have competed with a Penn Spin Fisher or a Mitchell 302 saltwater reel. It, uh, it works fine, but we're going to take this apart and just have a look at it, show you how it's made and uh, what the components are inside of it. Now, it didn't work this well when I took it apart uh, a little while ago because I did rebuild the reel. At that point, we did have some issues with the bale. The bale is functioning fine now. Uh, but uh, when I bought this, uh, it's what I tell everybody to do if you're buying a flea market or a garage sale or an estate sale kind of a thing. Test the reel completely because parts are not going to be available. Make sure that your, your knob is, is turning and that it's not chipped. Check the handle, make sure that it's in good condition. Check the drag, tighten the drag down there. Make sure that it, uh, it holds. In this case it does, because I know I rebuilt the reel. Uh, make sure that uh, it turns. Even if it turns sluggish, that's fine, but make sure it turns. Make sure that uh, the bale operates properly. Uh, in this case it wasn't operating, but I could see that when, uh, when I did it, that the trip lever was tripping, that the bale wasn't swinging. Uh, and that just meant that it was all dried out. So we, uh, we took care of that, made sure that that worked fine. And uh, I'm going to take this apart and I'll just show you how it, uh, how it comes together and uh, talk a little bit about the offshore reels. So uh, first thing I do is I take the handle off and then I go to the other side of this reel. This has a half case, uh, so it's, uh, you don't have to remove the rotor. We will just to show you how that's done. But in this case, we can access the gears without doing that. And uh, take the three screws out that hold the side plate. This is a metal case reel, and it was made in Hong Kong. So a lot of us today, you know, we bemoan that all the reels are made in China and that uh, nothing's made, uh, you know, where it uh, used to be, whether it's uh, the Abus uh, from uh, uh, Sweden or if it's the Pens from the U.S. or if it's the Mitchells or whatever. We all bemoan that they're not made uh, where they started from. Uh, and uh, that's just a matter, I think, of the real companies chasing the, uh, the labor market. Okay, you're noticing I'm also putting my pieces into a parts tray here. That's so I can find them later. All right, so this reel has a main drive. It has a cross wind assembly and it drives the spool up and down. It has a pinion gear. It's a very simple engineering piece. Uh, this uh, cross wind gear is driven by a stud on the main gear. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off so we can get this spool off. And then I will show you the, uh, the internal components, how that main gear works. You can tell that it's uh, recently been lubed because I did overhaul this reel. Uh, when I got the reel, it was very sluggish. And that was because all the grease had dried in it. So don't be afraid of a sluggish operating reel. But be afraid if there's any odd noises, uh, grinds and the like. And uh, you'll, uh, you'll learn quickly how to distinguish just a reel that needs some basic maintenance from a reel that's just not going to work properly. All right, you can pull the spool out when you take that off. And then again, there's a stud that this sits on. This is a cross wind block. I'm going to put that in my piece, uh, pieces and parts as well. Now, on some of the other reels that we did, you could push this main gear out right now. You can't on this one because it has the uh, pinion gear is uh, locked in there you'll, so you won't be able to throw it. You have to take the, the spool assembly off to do that. In this case it's a it's a 12 millimeter wrench that I'm going to use and it has a little carrier on there and this one has the traditional uh, right, uh, right threaded uh, pinion gear. Sometimes you'll notice that these are left threaded. Uh, you just need to, to kind of be cautious when you first start doing that because if you uh, if you make a mistake then you can over tighten it and uh, you'll be in trouble there. And there's a collar on the pinion gear that holds the rotor away. Now we can push that pinion gear through. Of course I got the stud right where the pinion gear would be. 
the pinion gear comes out and then we can push the, the main gear through off of that. Main gear is in good, good condition. That's fresh grease on there. As you notice, I had old grease on there before. I cleaned that off with cotton swabs and paper towels. This is the anti-reverse ratchet that's built into the back of this. And unlike some of the main gears that you see today, this is not a left or a right-handed reel. Uh, it's a single-sided reel, much like uh, the pens and some of the other ones from the, uh, the 70s. Uh, and the stud drives that up and down crank. So you want to make sure it's clean. Uh, once you do that, uh, you put some fresh blue grease on there. I use a, a pen precision reel grease. Uh, that's a good balancing act. A uh, pen precision reel grease for the greases that I use on my reels. Uh, anybody's universal grease can do that. You'll uh, just do a nice application of that. We'll go ahead and put some more on. It's not going to hurt it. Uh, put some more on it and then you can reinsert that shaft here. And when you, when you reinsert, this is another thing you test for, is the anti-reverse dog mechanism working. In this case it is. You want to make sure that you disengage that. And in this case we got a little lever here on and off, on and off. We want to make sure it's off like that so that it's easier to put that main gear back in. Uh, otherwise you'd uh, have to pry down on that bar to do that. Okay, so once that's back in we can reinsert the, the main gear. Now what you do with the pinion gear, just like that main gear there, is you check the teeth to make sure there's no wear on it, that there's not a bend or a break or a chip tooth in there because that will uh, make the uh, the reel perform poorly. This is a ball bearing reel. The ball bearing is sitting underneath this plate here. Uh, we don't have to take that out in order to lubricate the bearing. You can come underneath with some reel oil and drop it in that way. And uh, that's Reel X, which is the reel oil I use for bearings. So bearings get oiled. Uh, the gears and the moving parts get blue grease. I'll put a little bit more on this pinion gear here. Uh, just for illustration, but also because it won't hurt it. Okay, once we do that, we're going to come back and we're going to find that collar. I'm going to put that over the pinion gear there. Then we're going to come back and put the, the rotor on. Now the rotor had that little keyway. Now this is a kind of a, uh, a north-south thing. You have to line the little tab up in the spool. This is the little tab it sits on with the oblong in the pinion shaft which is just about at noon and then you can slip both over which is what we did here. And we can grab the nut. Again you see everything's coming out of that parts bucket which is a good thing. So if, if you didn't remember some of the sequences or if you're looking in your parts bucket and you can't remember where that piece of part came from, I always suggest taking pictures along the way. Uh, use your cell phone camera, use a digital camera, uh, use whatever uh, makes sense for you. But take pictures along the way so that you can see the sequence that you remove the pieces and parts out of. And uh, if you get stuck with something extra in there, you can come back and, uh, and go back and see where you took it from. Okay, so now this cross wind block comes through. And then on the cross wind block we have the spool. And once we do the spool, this one has two, uh, two holes from the screws that we took out. I used a centering pin just to hold it in place while I try for the first set screw. And again, I've had this reel apart before, so I kind of know the sequence here. But if you were having any trouble with that, you could always go and take a, uh, take a look at your pictures. We're going to go ahead and put that first one in, then we can put the second in. So what are we seeing? We're seeing a pretty good quality reel here. Uh, I don't know what the original retail was for. Like I said, it was, it was intended to be a low-cost competitor to some of the, the more uh, forward reels of the time in the 70s and uh, early 80s. Uh, it's certainly a solid reel. It holds about 350 yards of 15-pound monofilament line. So it's, uh, it's intended for salt water or for deep lakes, uh, great lakes type fishing. Uh, the, the componentry within this is fine. Obviously it's working after uh, 30 or 40 years here and uh, it's ready to go again. So uh, this, is, uh, this is sort of the fun part of doing real repair is just kind of learning. Learning what the 
technology was, the materials that they were using, what made one reel better than another, uh, what uh, you know, what to avoid, where common breaking points are, and that's what I'm showing in my videos. I'm showing uh, not only how to do basic servicing on reels like this one, you just saw we did some basic servicing by taking this reel apart, but also uh, you know maybe some hints and techniques uh, along the way, like the parts bucket or like the protective glove I'm wearing, uh, and also. Uh, well, you know what makes one reel better than another. I do notice that there's a lot of um, bias out there. You know, some people swear by reels. You know, it's got to be a pen. It's got to be a Shimano. It's got to be an Abu, whatever. Uh, and sometimes, you know, they'll they'll claim better quality. And and I'm not sure from what I see on my side from the componentry and that whether that's always the case. I'm just thinking sometimes it's just extraordinary luck. Uh, Somebody had a, a good experience with the reel, and uh, therefore, you know, they're going to stick with it. I guess it's sort of like automobiles. If you if you get a car that you like that doesn't break down and uh, gets you where you want to go, then uh, then you consider that a great car, and uh, and you probably buy a second or a third one. So there we go. So we got a reel. It's a very smooth turning reel. Had a problem with the bail. It's not have a problem any longer with that reel. This one can go fishing again. And uh, we'll find find somebody who might want to go uh, spend a couple of dollars and uh, go put it to use. Uh, otherwise, I'll put it on my shelf as an example of uh, a reel and, and how it was made back in the day. So I hope you enjoy this uh, type of a video. If you do, I've got some more coming up. Uh, please subscribe. If you like this one in particular, please indicate that you liked it. Uh, we're doing the, the Japan and, and offshore reels. Uh, I did one or two are ready. Here's another one I'm going to do. I'm going to do the Hedden 260R, which is another made in, made in Japan reel. Uh, this one again is working. Another garage sale find for only a couple of dollars. We'll take that apart and we'll see what the, uh, the quality is on that one as well. So uh, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching the video.